Hello, today I will be addressing the following question. As new modes of production and distribution emerge in a digital context, documentary and animation are increasingly likely to converge in different ways. Discuss how theoretical conceptions of documentary modes that are framed by a reliance on the indexical and notions of truth are increasingly problematic. In this blog, I will specify what documentary and animation are, their core aims and their limitations. I will also discuss how the convergence of documentary and animation can be problematic, but can also be argued to enhance the documentary experience. To begin, documentary relies on the notion of truth, official facts and authenticity, and audiences have this expectation when viewing a documentary. These expectations are reliant on the fact that the camera is a transparent medium and forms an identical image, hence what is depicted is truth. However, animation usually produces what a live action cannot, hence does not form an indexical image. In fact, it completely relies on human intervention. Therefore, converging this medium with fact can be problematic. To help answer this question, I will be using Andre Bazin and Michael Foucault's theory on objectivity, Bill Nichols' Six Modes of Documentary, and Annabelle Honor's Rose Modes for Documentary Animation, and the artwork by David Clearbout to understand these theories. I would now like to suggest some ways in which merging documentary and animation can be problematic. According to Andrew Bazin, photography can be objective because it is produced automatically without creative intervention. This idea is linked to the photographer manipulating the image to persuade opinion. Many photographers do try to enhance the image in some form, either through composition, colours, lighting, etc. However, according to Bazin, if the photographer could leave the photographic process at any time, the image can be thought of as objective. The act of persuasion is still prominent in photography, therefore does this affect indexicality? Well, in every film, editing is a process which inhibits objectivity, if we're following Bayson's theory. Moreover, it is not necessarily the animated documentary genre that has an issue with indexicality, but the documentary genre in general. Furthermore, many ethical questions surround the concept of placing animation within documentary when animation cannot directly reproduce reality. In David Clearbout's Vietnam 1967 near Dufo, it is not overtly obvious that the original picture by Hiromishi Mine was retaken by Clearbout. Clearbout's sequence was arguably theatrically enhanced. It has many discontinuities, but creates something aesthetically desirable, which engages audiences. To a certain degree, the viewer is led to believe that this sequence was reality. This is also a problem in his work, Kindergarten Antonio San Elia. The season of the piece is unspecified, however the leaves falling suggest autumn. The viewer has to wonder if this was done for dramatic effect, or to further comprehend Clearbow's notions of time, although it may not be authentic to the season. However, although the reasons stated previously suggest that documentary and animation should not converge, there are also many reasons why they should. According to Hayden White, objectivity is undermined by infinite details in one single event thus meaning that it is impossible to reproduce reality. Many watch a documentary to find an end result, and this is due to its foundation in science. Thomas L. Sasser's quote sums this idea up. It means that nothing could reproduce reality objectively, and there are many truths, not merely one truth. Furthermore, continuing with the idea of artifice, when audiences are watching animation, they are aware that what they are watching is not real, and this causes for a more engaged audience. This is evident in Clearbout's Vietnam. Realistically, an aircraft cannot be suspended in midair for three minutes. Also, there were three other original photos of this one moment, and they all differ from each other. Clearbout is conveying his truth and showing that the past is irretrievable. Moreover, because the viewer is aware of the cinematic enhancement, the lack of indexicality is more prominent, and thus the viewer has a more analytical experience with the information. Another reason for the convergence is that animation can depict what live action cannot. For example, if there is no live footage of an event, such as in Windsor McKay's The Sinking of the Lusitania, where the film was animated due to a lack of live footage. Jeffrey Scholar believes that a cause of the border between fact and fiction becoming more clear was due to a politically changing world. Audiences were more apprehensive about what they were watching, and animation enriched documentary because it expressed the anxieties within society. Animated documentary does not fit neatly into one of Bill Nichols' six modes. These modes form a set of expectations for the audience, and arguably, animated documentary can be difficult to distinguish and cause confusion. 
However, it has been theorised by many scholars, and Annabel Honners Rowe has created a set of functions specific for animated documentary, mimetic, non-mimetic and evocation. Clearly, animation has a strong place in the documentary genre for this kind of development to be raised. Overall, animated documentaries are not as problematic as once thought. It is clear that objectivity is an unrealistic aim when creating any documentary, not only when animation is involved. And in fact, animation included in documentary makes it more obvious to the audience that what they are watching is not indexical and should be analysed more carefully. Furthermore, it shows what live action cannot, and the specific set of functions for animated documentary shows that it has a strong position in the documentary genre.